My coverage of Computex 2018 is brought to you by Gigabyte, Cooler Master, Team Group, and Thermaltake. All right, guys, I'm at Noctua now, and I have in my hand one of the NF812X25 new fans. They have been developing for five years, and they just recently launched within, like, the past month or two. It's a very exciting launch, but you guys probably have already seen some different demonstrations and some videos on this actual fan. Noctua is actually showing some specific and unique use cases for this fan if you're not just planning on sticking them in a computer. And they also have some interesting other products I think you guys might be interested in, so let's move on. So first off comes the practical demo and basically they are working on a new NHU-12. This is it right here. It is a smaller cooler than their uh, NHD-15 because it's using 120 millimeter fans, the AF-X25s. Two of them in push-pull. It's a seven heat pipe configuration cooler and uh, other than that, vertical air cooler, uh, but just with really nice fans on top. To prove its worth, they have a couple power supplies set up here and those are feeding over to some thermoelectric plates beneath each of these coolers in these two acrylic cages. This is not the most scientific testing environment, of course, but on the left you have an old DH-15, on the right you have the new NHU-12, and basically they're cooling about 220 watts of heat output, which is equivalent to, say, a mainstream overclock CPU with a 4 to 8 cores, or perhaps a high-end desktop with even more cores than that, depending on the frequency and everything. But as you can see, they're both cooling pretty much the same. They're both at about 49 degrees Celsius, which means that uh, the NHD-15 sucks now and you should get this one. That's not really true. NH215 is still awesome, but now available in a much smaller, more compact size with better fans. Now the A12X25 fans were in development for five years and they have a unique material that the fan blades are made of and they're very fancy. So they do cost a decent amount. They're about 30 US dollars or 30 euros if you're in the EU. But two of those plus the cooler is probably gonna be around $100, which is about 10 bucks more than the NHD15, but you get equivalent cooling and a more compact size. So get what you pay for. Now, LGA 3647 is uh, Intel's Xeon platform, so I brought Jacob over here because he was giving me an explanation. Now, recently Intel teased a 28-core, 56-thread processor, and uh, I showed a video where we actually got a look at the platform. You were able to see that it's an LGA 3647 motherboard, and LGA 3647 is a Xeon platform. It's, it's uh, made for enterprise use. And Jacob was explaining to me installation of a CPU on that platform because there has been some skepticism. If you guys saw the Gamers Nexus video, there's some definite skepticism as to if Intel is going to be able to bring this product to market as they have promised this year, at least in the form factor that they have demonstrated here at Computex. So Jacob is gonna real quickly give us an explanation of how you install one of these processors in LGA 3647. Yes, as Paul has said, um, uh, this socket has been designed for enterprise level um, system assembly, so it's very quick and efficient for um, large volume uh, system integrators. If you're in assembling individual system, things are a little bit more tricky and there are a couple of things you need to take care of. First of all, you'll have to clip the CPU into this, um, uh, Intel calls it a processor clip, and you'll have to make extra sure that these little plastic catches yeah. firmly snap onto your CPU and that the clip is really uh, fully snapped onto the CPU. Because the next step that you have to do is put the CPU with the clip onto your cooler, snap it onto the cooler, it will actually latch to the mounting parts you can see here. And um, once this is done, you will put the whole thing onto the motherboard and fix it with four screws. Now that sounds pretty straightforward, but at that point you will really have to make double sure that the CPU is firmly snapped to the processor clip because otherwise you have the risk that the CPU could fall down and fall into the socket, which could damage the socket and uh, as the LGA 3647 motherboards tend to be very expensive, this is something you would want to avoid at all costs. Yes, because damaging pins on a three, four hundred dollar plus motherboard is not a good time. And a company like Intel would want to make sure that they're at least making an attempt to minimize RMAs and returns for that kind of experience. Now, when Threadripper came out with the TR4 socket, I was pretty excited because it was a little bit more of an advanced installation method. There's a few details you need to pay attention. But in this case, you're actually clipping the processor to the cooling solution and then dropping it into the socket. And it just seems like there might be some potential for end users to damage it, so possibly not the most user-friendly solution. So 
I still hope that Intel comes out with the 28 core processor as they have promised, but will it be on this exact platform? We're not really sure. Hopefully there's more details soon. We'll have to wait and see. That's a good, that's a good answer. Here's another practical application of the NF-A12X25. It's a desk fan. This is just a 3D printed mock-up that they've made, but I can tell you, you can stand a good six to eight feet away from this thing and you still get a pretty intense blast of air from it. Thanks, of course, to the effectiveness of the fan, but also the design of this unit right here. They're using the Venturi effect to help pull additional air into the airstream by virtue of the vacuums that are naturally created between there. So even if I have my finger back here, I can still feel airflow being pulled through this unit. They are planning and working with the design team to make a finished product of this that uh, looks a bit more nice for a desktop use. But for now, I want to steal this and bring it home because I need a nice quiet desk fan and this seems like a good one. Moving over to the prototype section, when the NFA12X25 came out, of course, Noctua was instantly asked, well, is there going to be a 140 millimeter version of that? We need a larger one, too. Yes, they're working on it. It is a completely different design process. They can't just scale up the 12 centimeter one to 14 centimeters, but at least in the meantime, they have some next-gen D-type coolers, so like the D15. They're working on two different versions, one with two fin stacks, one with a single fin stack. According to Noctua, these are pretty much equivalent in performance so far, so once they get this figured out they will probably launch this and I'm not gonna make any promises as to when that will happen though because uh, you guys you guys know how Noctua does it they don't launch it till it's ready speaking of the 14 centimeter version of the a12 x25 here's the 12 centimeter version here is their existing mock-up of the 14 centimeter version as you can clearly see it it is clear in the prototype stage so uh, hopefully it won't take five whole years to develop like this one since they have uh, perfected the material in here but uh, maybe next year sometime here's some products that were teased last year that we're actually expecting to launch next month these are basically five volt versions of their 12 volt fans so 100 40 millimeter, 200 millimeter, as well as the 120 millimeter, and these, since they're 5 volt, can be converted with a simple adapter to USB, so you can just plug them in via USB, run them off a power bank, or run them off of a USB port in your computer. Just a more convenient way to connect these up, and we're expecting these to launch in June. Since Noctua fans are so good, people often take uh, existing products that have other fans integrated for cooling purposes and add Noctua fans to them. This is just a demo they have because this Prusa i3 MK3 3D printer, and this is the actual printer unit here, needs to stay cool, and they had so many people swapping out this little Noctua fan in there that they have now adopted it, and they're just shipping it with the Noctua fan installed. This product, I think a very niche group of my fans will be interested in, it is the Sensor Wake Olfactory Alarm Clock. So it's an alarm clock. You put perfume packs in there, or, or uh, smell packs. There's, there's various varieties that can go in there. 11 different scents, espresso, chocolate, peppermint, and orange juice. And then it wakes you up with a smell. But it doesn't want to wake you up with the sound of an annoying fan, so they're using a Noctua fan there in the back to deliver the smell to you to wake you up in the morning. Does anyone want this product? I, I don't know. I'm kind of interested. I don't know if I could be woke up by a smell. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get one of these to test out in the future, though. Moving on. Just a few more products to share here. This is in development, but should be out later this year. From the Redux line, this is an NHU-12. Sort of a redesign of this product. It's still, still using the NFP-12 fan on there, but it's available in the Redux colors of uh, sort of a lighter and darker gray. Tower style air, air cooler with four heat pipes, so the cooling isn't going to be quite as crazy good as some of their higher-end coolers, but this one's only gonna cost about 40 bucks. They're also considering some top plates on there to uh, keep things looking pretty. And they even have a bracket that could go across the top, potentially, so a similar setup to their Chromax line. I mentioned 3D printing earlier. This is a device that's specifically made to help 3D printer users, which often, apparently, I don't know because I don't use 3D printers very often, but they often run on a 24-volt system. Uh, so this is just a 24-volt to 12-volt DC to DC step-down converter. Just put that in line with your fan, and you can run your Noctua fan in a 24-volt environment. And finally, some new Chromax products, and I'm actually really excited about these here because Chromax, before, you had to sort of buy the existing Noctua cooler and then buy the Chromax products to go on top of it if you wanted things to be pretty and blend in. But they're now working on all black versions of the uh, NHD15 as well as the NHU12S. Even the little NHL9i, a uh, little, little low profile cooler is down there as well. All blacked out with black fans and uh, for anyone who's concerned about aesthetics in their build and can't quite get the color scheme to match right with the 
traditional black to a brown and tan color scheme. Even the tooling that they have for these is all black. So I think these products are going to be pretty popular and they're only expecting them to be maybe a few bucks more than the existing versions. And you get all the Chromax set up all together. You don't have to buy it individually. But guys, that's going to wrap it up for my coverage here at the Natua booth at Computex 2018. I'd like to, of course, say a big thank you to my sponsors for this event, Thermaltake, Cooler Master, Gigabyte, and Team Group. Uh, also, thank you guys for watching and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Maybe subscribe too because I got more Computex videos coming at you real soon. We'll see you in the next one.